one of the prophets of God in Isaiah said, he, he saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and around the throne, angels singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we just join in with them this morning. We lift our voices to praise our Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I was in the getting ready this morning, and uh, that same compassion that first ministered to you, Brittany, was all over me. Would you come up here, Jared? Hallelujah. It's coming on me again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Honey, come. Hallelujah. Give me your hands. Be strong. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Be strong. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We surround this couple with our faith and our love. And we thank you that they are kept by the power of God. Thank you for your power working, 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 working. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every cell in her body comes alive by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, like a surging force of energy going up and down her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. And that endowment that you gave me because you spoke to me this morning about it, that ministers to autoimmune diseases, those things which consume the body. You said to me this morning, it's by your mercies that we are not consumed. It's by your mercies Brittany's body is not consumed, but healed by the power of the living God. We surround her, surround both of them with our faith, and we laugh at the devil because he's a liar. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. <laughs> we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise for it is done. We give you praise for it is done. We give you praise for it is done. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you you're faithful, you're faithful, faithful, Lord. For you are faithful, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. The Bible said that when Peter and uh, John and the apostles were beaten and commanded not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus, the Bible said they went to their own company. That's where you go when you when you when you come into trouble and you get <laughs> the devil's opposing you. You get get around your own company. Why? Because they'll surround you with their faith, add their agreement, and where make tremendous power available. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. We worship you, 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 Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. It's the children's bread. It's the children's bread. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is the children's bread. I said, Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. children's bread then it's free yeah amen amen you just reach up and receive it amen hallelujah praise be to God praise be to God praise be to God amen praise be to God praise be to God thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. If you have any
in your body, you've been diagnosed and have a tumor, come down here. Hallelujah. Keep, keep praising him. Keep praising him. Hallelujah. The atmosphere is charged with the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reach out your hand in agreement. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. We release our faith. We release our faith. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, there goes. There goes. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Nashikia. Nimbrozuki. Repatia. Sisapuya. Keprazia. Sikidia. Punta Broski. Peshkitia. Ramasakaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm. In the name of Jesus. Nashikia. Kekakana Masamra. Sikite. Yakata. Rosabuya. Tepa. Prosakia. Yakara Masakia. Tepanta. Brazil. Sansan. Kete. Kete. Prabasan. Kete. Kete. Go ahead. Nashikita. Kana Mastita. Kete. Prabasakaya. Yes, 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 yeah, 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 yes, 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 it's done, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, praise God, praise God, anything else? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just thank God. The way you mix your faith with something is you say, I got it. And you worship Him for it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, each one of these that received this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. 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 We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. We've had now 10, I believe, people healed of cancer under this ministry in the last whatever number of years. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I'm telling you, the power is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. I'm believing for double of everything. That means double the number of people being healed. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, tell somebody I got what I needed. Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm telling you, if you came in here sleepy, you're awake now. <laughs> Praise God. The same anointing that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. Quickens our mortal bodies. Amen. It's good to have Deborah Banks with us. You, you uh, saw her, but maybe you did. if you were a visitor, you didn't know who she was or is. She's uh, from, well... She, well, we met her in Tulsa. She's not from Tulsa, but she now lives in Champaign, Illinois. And she was here this weekend. She, well, let me back up. She traveled with Brother Hagin, played the organ for Brother Hagin. 
and uh, we went to Rama, and we met them there. Same year as yeah, same year as us, and uh, I would say became friends. I won't speak for her, but uh, <laughs> she uh, became a great blessing to us. And uh, we, she was in this weekend, started Thursday night, Friday, and yesterday, working with the team, the worship team. And I love watching her. I, I love watching her do her thing. Yeah. I'd sit here, and they'd sing through a song, and she'd say, "Okay, altos, you sing your part. Let me let me hear that. No, 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 you're missing that note." And by the 20 minutes, by the time 20, 20, 20, 20, 30 minutes is over, that song went from here to here. Yeah. <laughs> so we thank God for her. She's coming in. She's going to be with us at camp meeting. I don't know everybody in the body of Christ, but I think one of the best organ players in the body of Christ. So I don't know why she wasn't up there this morning. We could, maybe somebody. But uh, we, we just thank God for her. She'll be back time to time to help our team. And we're reaching for excellence in every area. Praise the Lord. And uh, so thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. Traveled with Dad Hagen. Worked with uh, Bishop Keith Butler. Um, you know, just just uh, in great demand. So we're glad that she's agreed to come help us. Praise the Lord. Did you bring your Bible this morning? Do you know which sermon I'm going to preach? Me neither. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I got a couple of things rolling around. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, right? Amen. Praise God, praise God. But, but uh, let's just uh, go over, if you brought your Bible. I, I got something that's been stuck in me for uh, weeks and weeks. and I, 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 It just seems like that's still not ready to preach. How many of you know if you're, a, if you're an orchard grower and you grow peaches or whatever... You go out there and you, you reach up into the tree and feel which one's squishy. Yeah. And that's the one's ready to pick, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it seems like this is the one ready to pick. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go over to Joshua chapter number 1. And uh, we'll start here and where we end up, yea, no man knoweth. <laughs> Praise God. You believe in God for what we need this morning? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Joshua chapter number 1. You ever read this uh, verse number 8? Of course you have. Do you have all the revelation on verse number 8? No, we're still getting revelation. You know the story, starting chapter, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun. That doesn't mean he didn't have a mother or a father. <laughs> What do, you mean, what do you say, Myrtle? Uh, just, uh, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. That means he was serving Moses. He was his helps minister. His uh, armor bearer, you might say. And uh, God said to him, Moses, my servant, is dead. Because you remember, uh, his body was never found. So God had to tell him, Moses is dead. <laughs> Anyway, that's another story. But now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto thee, as I said unto Moses. I'm telling you, you've got to get your foot on some things sometimes. <laughs> Praise God. I've walked on many properties, and not, not just any random property, but things that God's spoken to us about. Yes, yes and said, uh, we put our foot on this and we make claim of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Every one of them in, are, are in the, either the church's name or our name now. Yes. Except for one, 4089, but that's coming. Yes. The angels are frustrating his plans. Yes. <laughs> you ever notice he can't get that hole filled back up over there? That's ours in Jesus' name. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto thee, not going to give it, I have given it unto you. There's so many things that have been given to us, but God's going to tell Joshua and us how to get it. 
Every, soul the place, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto thee, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all, all, say all, all, the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. God spoke to me about that verse last night. I got, I got something I never saw out of that verse. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You remember what we've been sharing about hindrances? Yeah. Yeah. How God has to use people. Yes, sir. Things come through the hands of men so many yes, times. Yes, Luke 6, 38. Yes, sir, sir. How many of you know, you apply that verse to this, there shall not be any man be able to keep me from having what God said is mine yeah. all the days of my life. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If they won't respond to the devil, God, God will use, I mean, excuse me, if they won't respond to God, they respond to the devil. Right. God will use somebody else. Right. Man can't stop the plan of God. Amen. 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 All the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I'm telling you, he won't. He'll never fail you. He'll never drop you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you, never leave you alone without help. Hebrews says, I will not, I will not, I will not. I will not, I will not, I will not. Be strong and of a good courage. I'm telling you, we're living in a day you've got to do that. You've got to get a hold of yourself and say, look yourself in the mirror and say, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance. Yeah, thank you, Lord, we're on the right track here. I just got the witness. Uh, divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers or their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. And he said that the second time. Yeah. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not. Let, let's, let's stop right there. How many of you know when Moses uh, died, God didn't tell Joshua, well, he's gone, so just throw all his books away? No. no. You ever notice how many times he referred back to his servant Moses? You know, just because the previous generation who had a message from heaven passed on doesn't mean that we throw that all away and, and look for something new. He said, verse, let's go back to verse 7 again. Only be thou strong, very courageous, that thou mayest deserve to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. He's saying, you don't need a new revelation. Just do what, God, what I told Moses. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. You know, the previous generations that brought us the things of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, miracles, faith, the message of faith, the gifts of healings, and brought us all these things. People are wanting to throw some of that away. The message of faith, the message of in Christ. They're wanting to do that. Well, you know, that's that generation. We're, we're the new, and they'll say, we're the Joshua generation. Yeah, and God spoke to the Joshua generation and say, don't forget what Moses said. Yes. Amen. Amen. Turn not from it to the, from the right hand to the left. And then he said in verse 8, that thou mayest prosper, excuse me, that wherever thou goest. And then verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. All the rest of the time you can think about what you want to think about. <laughs> day and night, that thou mayest observe. Somebody said, well, Bob, you can't do that. Well, then just tear that verse out of there then. But you've got to be careful. You start tearing verses out, you're not going to have a Bible anymore. Amen. No, you can't. You can do it. I mean, have you ever done something, you know, been busy doing something, dishes, the, the floor, cleaning in the house or working at the job, and you're worrying about something the whole time? You're thinking about some problem the whole time. Well, it's not about whether you can think on something day and night. It's about what you think on day and night. Just take that principle that you were using on worry and do it with the word. Amen. Day and night. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth day and night, that thou, uh, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, then, yes, yes. then, circle then. Yes. Not even, he's not even saying God's going to do this. Right. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Yes. 
and thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. He added no fear here. Neither be thou dismayed. That's discouragement. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. And he said there earlier, just like I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Amen. You know, you see great leaders in the body of Christ in years gone by or even today. And you, he's saying here, I'll be with you just like I'm with them. God's no respecter of persons. Yes. Amen. So we want to get into this because the Lord talked to me about it. A number of uh, days ago, because uh, I've, been, I've been contending for some things in the move of the Spirit. We're having more and more as we go. Praise God. Um, but he said to me, he said, when you're even in the midst of that, he said, don't lose your connection with me through the Word. Yeah. Not, yes. that, not that we are losing our connection with Him through the Word, but we've got to remember there's some things that without getting the Word in us, yes. planning it and meditating yes. on it, yes, and observing to do it, we'll never experience just because we have a move of the Spirit. That's That's right. Right. Yeah. 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 Not preaching against the move of the Spirit. How many of you know this is Word and Spirit, church? So, but, uh, but uh, I just uh, started hearing from the Lord about this. And uh, he's been talking to me about this. And then uh, I'll, I'll mention this. Brother Randy Greer was up with Pastor Craig Field, a good friend of ours up in uh, Toronto. And he's preaching. And the last service, he talked about some of these things. And it just confirmed what the Lord had already said to me. And I, uh, I kept wanting to go another way this morning, but he's saying, preach on this. Preach on this. So um, this verse to me, whenever I read this, this verse to me, I'm talking about now verse number 8 here. You, you, uh, you know, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, thou shalt meditate therein day and night. This verse to me has opportunity written all over it. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. He's making you an offer. Yes. I don't know if you've ever read the Bible over there in Hebrews chapter number 4. It talks about, uh, well, chapter 4, verse number 1. It talks about, the, uh, don't let, you know, like the Israelites uh, didn't enter in because of unbelief. Right. He said, uh, there's an there's a opportunity left us of yes. entering into His rest. Yes. Make sure you don't come short of it. Yes. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's, yeah. there's things, there are opportunities. God has given us many opportunities. Yeah. Like, for example, when he shed the blood of Jesus, he opened the way for us to come boldly to the throne of grace. That's an opportunity. That's an offer being given to us. He's offering us to come. And not just come and feel better. Come and get what you need. Come and get what you need. That's an offer God makes to you. And there are many offers. He's offered you a worry-free life. I said, he's offered you a, a worry-free life. There are many things that God has really uh, offered to you. For example, he's offered you a life of rest without, and peace without struggle. Yes. Amen. 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 He's offered you faith rather than fear. Yes. Amen. He's offered you to come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes. He's offered you joy in his presence. Yes. In his presence is fullness of joy. Yes. He's offered you something better to look at than your circumstances. <clears throat> He's offered you a life full of the Holy Ghost. Full and filled and flooded with God Himself. He offers you to drink until you're full and overflowing with the Holy Ghost. People don't take Him up on His offer, but the offer's on the table. <laughs> Amen. How many of you want to take Him up on some of these offers? People, people, they think they, well, I'll just do without this or do without that. I want everything God offers me. And this verse is just one of those offers. He's offering me and you success. <clears throat> That's what he ended up saying. Thou mayest deserve to do according to all that is written in there, and then thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. <clears throat> God's making you an offer. Are you going to take him up on his offer? Okay, somebody said, I'm going to take him up on his offer, so I'm going to go say, I'm going to start saying uh, success and speaking prosperity. Well, that's only a part of it. Yeah, yeah. you got to read the whole verse. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we want to talk about this meditation part today. <clears throat> because to be honest with you, um, God's been talking to me about this. Uh, there's a connection you need to make with God or maintain, if you've already made it, with God. 
uh, through His Word that can only bear fruit for your life through meditation on the Word of God. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this might sound a little crude, but uh, it's an illustration that helped me one day. Y'all still with me this morning? I was talking to a nutritionist one time. Uh, uh, I, was, I was on a cleanse. You know, you ever, you ever did a cleanse for your body? Take certain things and it's supposed to clean out the toxins or whatever. I was on one of these things that, that it cleansed regularly. And uh, I was talking to this nutritionist and they said, well, I was on that for a while because I thought it was pretty good. But they said, I got off of it because as I because they're knowledgeable some of these things. They said, I realized that the uh, nutrition, because of staying on this regularly, the nutrition that I was taking in was passing through my body before my body could assimilate it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I got off of it and didn't, do it, didn't de take that regularly uh, because it was not just cleansing out toxins. Things, things were passing through so fast that all the nutrition that was there for my body to absorb wasn't being absorbed into my bloodstream and so forth and so on. I thought, well, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. And so um, I, I thought, well, you know, uh, uh, so I made an adjustment on that. But anyway, as I was thinking about it later, I thought, you know, that's the way a lot of sermons I preach are. They go in and go through a person without getting all the nutrition out of it for their spirit because they don't meditate any further on what was said. You know what I'm talking about? Um, they're, on, uh, they're on some, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, cleansers. Strife is one. Some people are on more than cleansers. They're on hard laxatives. I'm not trying to be crude. I'm making a point. I'm talking about spiritually. This is not nice, and I shouldn't probably say it, but when we were kids, we would put laxatives in people's, uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was funny back then, but today it was mean. We shouldn't have done that. So don't let any preacher put a thought in your mind about doing that. You, you young people, don't, don't think about stuff like that. <laughs> but that's what some people are on spiritually. Yeah, yeah. They come to church, and uh, because the Word has nutrition in it, they take it in, but because they're either on some sort of cleansers like strife or fussing or talking about critically about what I didn't like the song they sang or I didn't like the, the way the preacher acted or I didn't like this or I didn't... That, that's, a, that's a hard laxative. So the Word went in, but before you left the parking lot, you took a hard laxative... And you can't even you can't even get home. You stop by a gas station. Can you pull in here? Now that's that sounds crude. I know it sounds crude, but you'll never forget that. I'm not trying to be crude. I'm trying to make a point that you'll never forget. Amen. If your spouse wants to get in strife on the way home, just look at him and say, "Don't get on that laxative." <laughs> Don't, 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 don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. You won't get anything. That, all the nutrition that was in that sermon that you heard will mean nothing to you. Get, you'll get nothing out of it spiritually. I'm not trying to be crude. I'm just simply making a point that, that you, you will never forget to help you realize that the word, that, that, that properly handling the word does let me, let me rephrase that. Going to church and hearing the word is does not equal properly handling it right. completely. Yes, sir, that's, right. Right. that's the first part. That's good. That's good. But then you've got to take it and meditate yes. on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And that just means, you know, uh, if you learn, look up the word meditate, it means to mutter, to think deeply into something. It means to uh, focus on a truth. Uh, ongoingly and not let it get past you right. Yeah, right. to focus on one to hold your attention on one particular truth yeah. <clears throat> you know you don't need 7,000 truths to receive your healing oh, that's right. 
one truth that you get a hold of will heal your body. There's, there's, there'll be something the Holy Ghost will, will, will prompt you about, and right there's your healing. I mean, just one verse, one truth. Getting a hold of one, <clears throat> the truth in one verse and uh, acting on it will do you a lot more good than 7,000 verses you know that you don't have really any revelation of, that you can just pair it with your mouth. Amen. 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 No word from God. The Amplified says of the, what the angel said to Mary. No word from God shall be void of power or impossible of fulfillment. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we need to teach on meditation because for several reasons. Because of what I just said. But um, because there's such a uh, blessing and help here for so many things people are praying about. They're trying to make their connection with God through prayer whenever God's saying, you can really make the connection with me through my word. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I'm not preaching against prayer. I mean, if you're going to pray, pray the word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But just prayer is not where, how you make your connection. God sent us his word yeah. yes. so that we can connect with him in it. Yes. Yes. So we want to talk about this. This has, like I said, this just to me, this verse, Joshua 1, 8, has opportunity written all over it. And uh, to be honest with you, whenever I read this verse, I see, I, I, it comes to me like this. God's saying to me, there's no limits on how far I can go. There's no limits on this verse. Praise be to God. So he's also, let me kind of give you the setting here. When it, notice how he started out, Moses, my servant, is dead. He's also transitioning. This is God speaking to the next leader of his people. Moses was not allowed to take the children of Israel into Canaan's land. He brought them out of Egypt, and they came through the wilderness. But then, remember, they uh, rebelled and said, we can't take the land And they, at Kadesh Barnea. And they stopped there and got into unbelief. And then because it grieved the Spirit of God, God said, all right, then none of you, just like you said, I'll, you know, what you said in my ears, that's what will happen for you. You said you won't go in and you won't go in. And then he said, uh, uh, everyone 20 years old and uh, older is going to die. You're going to be out in the wilderness for 40 years. And so then that next generation will go in. Well, uh, uh, Moses, excuse me, Joshua is the next generation. Yes. And so God's wanting him to take them into Canaan's land. Yes. Amen. Into the promised land. How many of you know we got a promised land on this side of heaven? Not heaven. The, the, the Canaan's land is not a type of heaven. You could say, oh, sure it is. Okay, then when you go to, Can when you go to heaven, are you going to have to fight demons? And Come on now. No, they had, to, they had to stand against Canaanites, Hittites, Jebusites, you know, parasites. <laughs> termites, whatever ites that were in there. <laughs> Keeping some of you awake. Hey, leave God for spring and some of you will wake up. Praise the Lord. But so they, they had to, no, this is a type of a, the blessings of God on this side of heaven. This belongs to, there's a promise, there's a land promised. There's a land that has been covenanted to us, and it's not necessarily a territory as much as it is the inheritance that's in Christ. It's the in Christ realities. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, uh, he said that this generation is the generation that's going to have to go in and possess that, but they still, they, if you know anything about slavery, they were in slavery for 400 years. Right. 400 years of slavery, is, is, it gets into the psyche of a people. Yeah. 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 It gets into the mentality of a yes. people. Come it on. gets into their thinking. Come yes. On. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yep. They think bondage. They think yeah. slavery. Yeah. Yeah. They think we can't. Yes. Right. Come on, somebody. And so God's saying, I need this generation to be the generation to go in, but they cannot go in to the land of increase and the land of more with thinking out in the uh, you know the Egyptian kind of thinking or slavery kind of thinking so in order to get them in there I've got to change their thinking and so I want them to meditate now he said this book of the law that was uh, that was the day they were living in they only had the first five books of the Bible that we call the Torah they only had those written by God gave it to Moses he revealed creation to Moses yeah. everything that happened back there he revealed, yeah. and that's all in the Torah now, you know Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus Numbers, Deuteronomy yes, 
That was what he was telling them about that day. But how many of you know, Hebrews says, God who in time past has spoken unto the, our, our, our fathers by the, his servants, the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by yes. his, his son, Jesus. Yes. Yes. The Bible's progressive revelation. More, more books were written, and we got now the New Testament. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we could, that, see, that was, this book of the law was their Bible back then. This is our Bible today, especially the New Testament. We're living in the New Testament. So he's saying, meditate in what the Word of God says day and night. And he said, that's going to really change those, change those mentalities, change that thinking that really kept them from being in 40 years earlier. Yes. They said we couldn't. They said yeah. we can't. They, yeah. they thought we, they couldn't. Right. Yeah. Right. They had a we can't mentality. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. 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 The next generation proved they could. We could. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a matter of whether you could, can or you can't. It's whether you believe you can or you can't. Yeah. Whether you think you can or you can't. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. All right. I'm going to preach this anyhow. Some of you looking at me funny. So... He's talking about how to change your circumstances. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. He's showing them how to initiate what they want from Him. This verse is not God doing anything. It's man doing something. It's, it's man initiating something. God left us His Word and said, Now, do what, that's an opportunity for you. I've opened some doors for you. I've said some things. I've promised some things. I said I gave you some things. Now, do, what, do with it according to your faith. Some do some with it. Some do th bigger things with it. Some take it and act like it's actually true and go all the way with it. But that wasn't God blessing one more than the other. Amen. Amen. That's them doing something with the Word. Yes. So he's talking about how to change their circumstances. And uh, you do it by changing your thinking. Yes. That's what he's, he's after here. God's offering you his thoughts. Take them. Yes. Yes. I mean, if you, want what somebody, if you want to operate the way somebody else operates, think like they think. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. The, the, the limiter so many times is not something in the natural it's something between the ears yeah. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So true. not yeah. trying to get mean or mad at anybody I'm just simply saying we've got to get a hold of our minds we've got yes. to get a hold of our thinking yeah. the devil is after people's minds yes. people are going squirrely in our culture yes, I mean they're, go they're going nuts they're, 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 they're out of their head yeah. they don't even know who they are nope. they, they go to school and think they're a kitty cat I mean, it's crazy out there. The devil's after people's minds. Amen. They're not a kitty cat. They're, they're oppressed with demons. And we're not mad at them. We're not, we're not uh, angry at them. We have compassion on them because that's such... The devil will demean humanity and make them less than a man or less than a woman. He'll, he'll take them down. God will always make you, he'll, he'll, he'll honor you. He'll dignify your life. Yes. Amen. But, but we got that going on around here. I'm talking about our culture, the things that are, the things that are after people's minds. Um, and uh, so this is not a day to just be lazy with your thought life. And God's saying, you need to meditate in my words day and night. That way you'll, you'll keep a sound mind. You won't get off squirrely like some of these things. Amen. But um, so uh, you, and, and let me just, I was on this the other day. I think I was talking about it. Another thing that the enemy is using to uh, rob people's ability to practice like what it says in Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law shall not depart, but thou shalt meditate. Yes. Meditate has to do with, it's, it, it just implies continuation with yes. something. Yes. Um, the way social media has been designed is this, it, just, it never allows anybody to really stay with something very long. You, you, people scroll, scroll, and they're looking at this and 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 this, and their minds are going from here to here to here to here to here to here. And they're losing their ability to meditate. We got more and more people. I mean, people talk about it, and then they come around here sometimes. I just can't. We talk about some things like we're talking about meditation, or we talk about feeding on the Word or something, or reading the Word or something, and they say, well, I just can't concentrate. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, thank you. 
You've just formed a rut that the social media has created in your brain. You need to get that discipline of your mind back. You need to so no, I'm taking that back. Now, we understand children, young children, they, they can't concentrate on one thing for very long. We understand that that's, that's just normal for a child. But adults are different. Yes. Amen. I said adults are different. Yes. Uh, you need to reclaim that, that ability to focus on one yes. truth. Yes. For if, if you're struggling with it, just focus on it for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. amen. Yeah. And then get, next time, go for a little bit longer, and then yeah. go for a little bit longer, yeah. and get to the place to where you quiet that mind and you get that busyness yeah. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor he's preaching better than your yeah. amen, and that's for sure. <laughs> so uh, this has been a, this has become a lost art in the body of Christ. Meditation, it's a lost art in the body of Christ. But every spiritual giant I've ever met does it. Absolutely. That's why they are where they are. Absolutely. They're very disciplined with their thought life. They don't entertain just every little thing. In fact, the, the, the spiritual giants I've been around, people can, they, you, you're sitting holding a conversation with them, and people can come in the room and do all kinds of things, say all kinds of things, and they'll never, they'll never, they'll just, they're, they're just, they're holding this conversation. Why? They've learned to concentrate on what they're doing. It's because they've disciplined themselves yes. through, through meditation. Yes. Meditation is a spiritual discipline every Christian needs to develop. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And I'm not talking for, you know, three minutes. I mean, uh, you want to you wanna absorb the contents, right? Yes. What if you ate food and it passed through in three minutes? <laughs> I just saw people's eyes light up. They go, oh. That's what she was talking about before. Yeah, you can't do that. Even for an hour. Well, I don't have that kind of time. That's your problem. You got to cut some other things out. Hallelujah. Smile. Everybody say, say he's happy this morning. <laughs> Not mad at anybody. We're just simply saying we've got to get back to true Bible discipline because really this is the main key to success in the, in the Bible. How you handle the word is what he's talking about. How, this is talking about how you steward the word. Uh, the Bible says, uh, remember the parable of the sower. He said there's four kinds of ground, and one of them's the rocky ground or stony ground, and it springs up real quick, but when the sun's out, it, it, it scorches it and it dies because it has no root in itself. It says afterward. Afterward. It says after W A R D. I crossed out W A R D and yeah. wrote W O R D. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 After the word was preached. Yes. After the word was preached. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on now. After the word was preached, you got to develop a root. Yes. You yes. Do. That that yes. that what which you heard preach yes. has not formed a root and gotten planted yes. deeply down into your spirit until you have watered yes. it with meditation. Yeah. Amen. And that's why people take stands and they, they quickly get moved off of their faith is because they have no root down into the Word themselves. They're strong in somebody else. They're strong in the faith of the church. We receive the faith of the church, but when we're on our own and the devil's lying and hounding, and are you strong? Do you have a root down into the Word of God because you've watered and watered and watered and watered? Through meditation, meditation, meditation. Yeah. Yeah. To where it doesn't matter what he says. You're, you, you, are, you are fixed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Trusting in the Lord. You're established. Yeah. Say it out loud. After word. After, after W-O-R-D. In other words, after the word preached in the church service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with the word after it's heard? Right. If you can't even remember it. Well, then it didn't get in. It didn't get in. It's sort of like water shit, like water off a duck's back kind of thing. I'm convinced, I'm convinced there's much more in the Word that we hear than what we're getting out of it. So let's go for everything. What do you say? So there's things that, um, there's things that meditation will do for you. 
It'll change you. Well, yeah, it'll change your circumstances, but it will change you first. You'll see yourself in the light of the Word. You'll see yourself as God sees you. And that is where the change in your circumstances will come from. God wants, really a lot of things God does, He does from the inside out. You have to uh, realize that God doesn't just go to working on your circumstances. He goes to working on you and your thinking and your believing and your talking and the inner image you have of yourself, the inner image you have of God, the inner image you have of the devil. Well, why should I need the inner image of the devil? You need the right image of the devil. If you watch the news, you think he's big and bad and all that. But if you read the Word, you see He's defeated. He's under our feet. So you need the right image of the devil, and you need to see him as he is, not as he portrays himself to be. And you can only do that through meditating in the Word. I gave you a couple services ago, I kept you several things the Bible says about Satan. He's defeated, he's been stripped, he's been spoiled. Remember all those things? You need to hold that up to him. Hold that up to him. Meditate on that until that gets real on the inside of you. So meditation will change your circumstances, but really it'll change you first because it'll change your thinking. It'll change the image that's, that, that you have of yourself, have of God, have of the devil, so forth and so on. And it'll change you. It'll, it'll, it'll make you see how defeated so many things are that are opposing you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So um, let's, let's look at some things about meditation. Would that be all right? <clears throat> So there's, there's a, a lot of things around us every day talking to us. Uh, you see uh, death, dying, suffering, uh, hurting. You see uh, the curse. You see poverty. You see torment mentally. You see broken marriages. You see all sorts of crime. You see people uh, full of fear. You see all kinds. I'm talking about in the culture around us. You, you see all this stuff. And if you're not careful, if you're swimming in that sea of the atmosphere of the people that are under, that are not yet, that have not yet received their redemption, you can form a, a, a image of God, the devil, yourself, and so forth and so on, from all of that rather than the truth of God's Word. Are you with me this morning? <clears throat> the devil has a dark room. We, we, in high school, we used to, you know, nowadays it's all uh, digital cameras and everything, but in high school, we used to, uh, I was in the photography club, um, and, uh, you know, back then it was those old time cameras. What do they call those with the film in them? There's a, there's a wave. There's a, anyway, and so we'd take the picture and it would put, you know, that, that uh, shutter would open and the light would strike that film. And then you had to go into a dark room and uh, pull that film out and, and you couldn't have any light in there. And you put it in this certain solution and then I was a part of doing all that. Um, and you develop that image in a dark room. The devil has a dark room. A room where there's no light that he's trying to form an image. The image that needs to be formed in your life needs to be formed in the light. The light of the truth of God's Word. But without constant meditation in the Word, the devil will be the one forming the image and it'll be in the dark. It'll be in the dark meaning it'll be a lie. It won't be the truth. Praise God. So uh, that's one thing that meditation will do for you. It'll give God the opportunity to reveal His truth to you. In other words, we'll get into that in a minute. I think there's more there that, that we, we want to say. So um, really to, be, to have so many things, according to uh, Joshua 1.8 here, to have so many things change, including your success and being successful in life and prospering in life, to have those things change, your thinking has to change. Yeah. And your mentality has to change. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, I like something Brother Randy Greer said when he was preaching. I'm going to give him credit this time. It's the last time I'm going to give him any credit after this. But he said, you know, you need to have brain surgery. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're doing when you're coming to church. You're getting That's brain good. surgery. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. I mean, not literally, but you understand what I'm talking about. Thinking surgery. Get some old thinking out and put some new thinking in. 
And when you meditate in the Word, you're taking the old thinking out and putting new thinking, putting God's thinking in. Amen. Amen. Then your old friends that used to know you years ago, they'll see you and just yeah. say, man, you've changed. What happened yeah. to you? And you say, well, I went, to, I went down there to church. Yeah. And uh, I got brain surgery from a guy with a high school education. <laughs> and I'm doing so much better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So um, God wants to work on you. How many of you know he does, it? He does this because he loves us? But he's given us an opportunity to take his thoughts. He said, I'll work on you and change your thinking and change your circumstances if you'll work with me and meditate on my word. His thoughts are in his word. That's why he gave us his word, to give us his thoughts. So uh, he wants us to walk in all that he has for us, but we can't do it with wrong thinking. Uh, you can't walk in wilderness thinking and wilderness mentality and uh, you know Egyptian thinking Egyptian mentality and have Canaan's land have all the promises of God amen and so uh, this is such a big key uh, you can speak in tongues and we thank God for speaking in tongues we do it all the time you can uh, you know bind and loose and so forth and so on but really if you don't do all those things with a revelation because you've meditated in the word you're not doing it in the kind of faith that really produces a lot of results Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, what happens when you meditate? Um, so are you ready to go through some things? Uh, first of all, when you meditate, uh, it changes your thinking, like I said. He said here, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Say mouth, mouth. and meditate. Meditate. To think deeply, meditate means to think deeply into, to ponder, to mutter to oneself. It means to focus on a particular truth. Yes. And it all has to do with your mind. Yes. Yes. Now, sometimes preachers, and I've never shied away from this because I was tormented in my mind. Yes. And I needed help in my mind. As soon as I started getting my answers from the Bible, I, I grabbed onto it quickly yes. because I needed the help in this area. But some preachers are afraid to uh, talk about the mind because, it's, there, because there's crazy people out there talking about the mind. And there are. There are people that are strange. You know what I'm talking about. And they want to, you know, sit in, in, a, in, a, in the middle of a room, cross their legs and hum and open themselves up in their thought life to the great nothingness, you know. And, yeah. and, and, and you, you get contact with wrong things in that, yeah. doing that. It's not that the, we should shy away from, as Christians, shy away from talking about the mind. It's that we should uh, decide what we're going to think yes. on. Yes. You're thinking on something all the time. Yeah. It's just what are we going to think on? The Bible says whatever's true, whatever's just, whatever's lovely, whatever's pure, whatever's of good report. Yes. Think yes. on these things. Yes. One preacher said one time, he said when God was handing out brains, they thought he said, he said I think some people I know thought he said trains and said, said no thanks, I don't need any. <laughs> no, think, think, think on these things. Your mind is not your enemy. We only think that sometimes because of squirrely thinking. That's not your enemy. It can be a great friend to your faith. It can be a great friend to your spiritual Come development. Yes. Things don't get into your spirit unless they go through your mind. Right. Right. That's, what, that's one of the reasons we need to meditate is because it feeds the word into our spirits. Hallelujah. It's not your enemy. It's your great fr- it can be your great friend if you do the right thing with it. Praise God. <clears throat> Um, but sometimes, you know, I was thinking this the other day. Um, I've used it in a different way, but I'll use it in this way. There, I was up in Maine preaching one time years ago, and there was a man up there that was in the church that was a crabber. That just means they go out in the ocean and they catch crabs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> man. <laughs> you, want, you want to be my friend, get, get me some crab cakes, man. Ooh-wee. Sweet. Crab cakes. Yes. Best thing this side of the this side of heaven. <laughs> well, give me two because she don't want one. Give me two. But anyway, he's a crabber, and he was up there, and he was in this church we were preaching at, and he said something I never forgot. He said, "If I catch crabs, he said, if I catch one and I put him in the crab bucket, I got to put a lid on that crab bucket because he'll crawl. You know, crabs have those big long legs." And so he said, but if I catch more than one, two, three, or however many, he said, I can put them in that crab bucket and I don't have to put a lid on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
He said, because when one starts crawling out, the other one will grab him and pull him back down. I thought, oh, I, I, I know some church folks like that. One starts crawling out, and they're like, well, who do you think you are? But here's what I was thinking about the other day. That, that's not only true about some church folks, not, yeah. not anybody here. Yeah. They've all gone. Um, but, so, <laughs> but, but, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But that, your thinking will do that to you. Your old stinking thinking will do that to you. You start reaching for more of what God has for you, and your stinking thinking will reach up and say, no, you can't do that. So you need to get rid of that crab. Stinking thinking is crabby. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, I'm trying to get to these things. You want to get to these things? So um, we gave you the definitions. It means to meditate on, means to mutter, de think deeply into, focus on the truth in your mind over and over again. Why? Because it's the gateway into your spirit. And do that day and night, right? Uh, God's, God's word is true. He said, we will, if we do this, we'll have success. We'll have good su We'll make our way prosperous and we'll have good success. And so here's, here's some things that as you meditate on the word, it'll do for you. Praise the Lord. Let me get over here to where I'm, where I'm supposed to be at. Um, oh, no wonder. I'm in a totally wrong place here. All right. Praise the Lord. Got a minute? All right. Here's some things it'll do for you. As you, as you uh, meditate, it'll form your thought life. It'll form your thought life. Amen. We've been talking about that. It'll also allow you to absorb the contents of the Word. We've been talking about that. Um, it, it's, it's something that you can, uh, as you meditate on the Word of God, it will actually take your life in the direction that you meditate. If you want your life to go a direction, learn to think thoughts in line with that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. From God's Word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you need to see your sin. And this is another thing meditation allows you to do. It allows you to see it. The truth of God's Word. You can quote things and not see them. Do you know that... Uh, well, I could take longer than I have time to do this. But... Uh, when you meditate, you need, what it'll do is it'll enable you to see the reality of what God's saying. Yeah. <clears throat> you can meditate on the Word, or, or you can quote the Word, let's put it that way, and even read the Word and not see it. Yes. I've watched, I'm thinking of a lady at camp meeting one year, Miss Deborah, maybe you remember this story. Brother Hagin, I mean, he told, I think he told this publicly, but we were in the back at the, uh, where the, all the booths were for all the ministries, and there was a, sec a booth there for healing school, and we heard this lady's testimony back there. Um, but she was, uh, she got up one night, and uh, she just got up out of the wheelchair in one of the evening services. And everybody's rejoicing, of course, but the next day or so, whenever it was, day or two later, she's at one of these book tables uh, out in the little, uh, what do they call that foyer out there? And she was... Uh, getting something from one of the tables and somebody was helping her and she seemed kind of mad mm -hmm. and irritated and they said can we help you yeah no, I'm fine <laughs> she's irritated and they said well you know is everything all right yeah everything's fine uh -oh. and they're like well they thought maybe somebody offended her or something right, right. and say ma'am uh, aren't you the lady who got healed the, got up out of the wheelchair yeah. she said yeah I'm the one yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said well what's wrong she said I could have been out of that wheelchair so long, so, right. so much, yeah. so, so much, yeah. way back there, I could have been out of that wheelchair. Yeah. The devil lied to me. I didn't see the reality that I'm already healed. Yeah. She's mad. <laughs> I've had similar things here at your church. People come and they sit and they hear the word and they say, why have I never heard this before? And they're almost angry that, that they didn't hear this before. Come on, I, I know it's true about me. It's like, why didn't they tell me that where I went to church? Yeah. It's right there in the Bible. Why didn't they tell me that? Yeah. Well, you can't get mad at them. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? They, they don't see it because they, they don't preach it because they don't see it. But I need to see it. 
So I, I hang out with people that have meditated yeah. that help me see what the Word says. Yeah. And, then I, I, and then I can't live off their revelation. I've got to live off my revelation. Yeah. So I meditate. Yeah. And, and sort of like an old cow, rheumatate. <laughs> chew the cud. Chew the cud. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, after it's preached. I do that. You, you wouldn't believe sometimes whenever, like Wednesday night or Sunday afternoon or something, I, I, I might go take a nap or I go to bed after service Wednesday night and I'll wake up in the middle of the night or to wake up from a nap Sunday and I'll be like, oh, yeah, man, that was good. What, uh -huh. I remember what the Holy Ghost said in service. You might think, you, you know, I, don't get, I get fed off my own preaching. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you can't get fed on your, on your own preaching, you better preach something else. Yeah. <laughs> And I just think, man, because I, I, yeah. I don't take credit for the utterance, things right. get said, yeah. you know. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I give the glory to God. Yes. But uh, I just, I just, and I lay there, and I, I don't do it like a cow, but it's like I, I, I <laughs> pull it up and chew it again. Yeah. You can tell I grew up on a farm, right? Yeah. 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 You'd see cows laying out, they'd eat, all, they'd eat their food at the trough, and then they'd go out and they'd lay down in the pasture. And I asked my dad one time, I, I saw him out there chewing. I said, what are they doing? He said, chewing their cud. Uh -huh. I said, what's a cud? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not edifying to talk about in church, but it's... But they have several sections to their stomach, and they can bring that back up and, and, and chew it some more. City girls need to know about stuff like this. <laughs> So, I, so, I, so my dad was teaching me about that, and so I'd watch him. And you could see, I don't mean to get graphic, but you could see, they'd, they'd lay down, and you could see a, a lump coming up. You, you could see their neck is long, you know. You could see it go up their neck, and then, oop, there it is. They, well, that's what you need to do after service. I'm not calling you a cow. I'm simply saying... I'm saying, you need to get what was preached and meditate on it some more. As you do, God will break it down. Do you hear that? Break it down. And, and you'll get more nutrition out of it. And, you'll, and the Lord will say, and that goes along with this verse over here. And you'll go, got it. In service, it was good, but you got it whenever the Holy Ghost broke it down for you. Praise the Lord. This kind of preaching might not work in New York City, but it'll work in Iowa, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it'll, uh, it'll take your life in the direction that you are meditating in. Amen. Uh, when you turn your thoughts over and over in your mind, and you mumble that, that something to yourself and, and, and ponder it, it, it has an effect on the direction your life tries, it starts to go. I don't even know if I can how to explain it all. Even the business world now is giving people time to, to think of things through before they start their day. That's an interesting thought. Uh, just, there's a lot more to that. Uh, number, whatever number we're on. Meditation gets the word in you and it gets you in it. Amen. It means to absorb the contents. That's what meditation is, to absorb the contents. Amen. Your spirit and your mind kind of become soaked in it. Yeah. Praise God. Uh, you, you, you need to become pickled with the truth of God's Word. <laughs> you know what I mean by pickled? Yeah. Pickled is something that's sort of soaked in that brine or whatever you call that until the dill flavor gets yeah. in there or whatever flavor. Yeah. Yeah. You can have the dill ones. I'll take the sweet ones. <laughs> but that's, that's a pickled yeah. whatever. Cucumber or whatever that is. Yeah. Pickle. Yeah. And, uh, and so it absorbs yeah. that brine. Right? It absorbs it. Yeah. That's what you need to do. It needs to be, it, it, you need to absorb it. You need to be, yeah. It needs to get into you. Yeah. Yeah. So much so that you, how many of you know you can't go into that dill pickle and, and take the dill back out of that? It's just in there. It's just now part of, part of the pickle. And if you meditate on the word, it'll become so much a part of you, the devil can't really get it out of you. You and it are one. Shoo. Praise the Lord. 
it's not something, healing's not something that uh, God has to give to me. Healing is who I am. Healed is who I am. I've absorbed that into my spirit, into my thinking. Praise God. Your spirit and your mind need to be soaked in the word until it absorbs it in. Uh, amen. Your mind needs the word just as much as your spirit needs the word. Praise the Lord. And so um, you, you can turn, th turn thoughts over and over in your mind and, uh, until you're, you're, you become one with it. Yes. Hallelujah. Meditation forms your spirit and your mindset. It forms your mentality. Really, the goal of renewing your mind is not reached until you have a new mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is a mentality? It is a way of thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can hear the word and get a new thought from the word. But that doesn't mean that's your, that's your predominant way of thinking about something. Yeah. Right? right. right? Yes, Just take giving and receiving, for example. You can hear that preached, but, it's not, it, and, but that's still not yet be the way of thinking. So your first thing to go to when you have needs is your own efforts and so forth and so on. Amen. It's not yet your mentality. When it becomes a mentality, it's just first nature. It's not you trying to, okay, I got to remember this. Right? And that's the way everything, even things in the natural are that way. I've been watching Justin fly the plane. I mean, it's becoming more first nature. To, it's like him and that plane are becoming one. You know, that's the process that you go through in anything. And that's the process you go through with the Word. You absorb it into you until it becomes one with you. You become one with it. And it, it's, just, it's just the way you think. It's, it's, it's amen. This will move you from unhappy to happy. Because oppression and depression is just, any, any depressed day is just a day of wrong thinking. That's what it is. But you can, you can get out of that through meditation on what the truth is. And you don't even need to come shake Mr. Happy's hand, you know, <laughs> Pastor Happy's hand. I'm so, I feel so much better I went to church. Well, you can live that way. Yeah. Pastor, do you not have any down days anymore? What's that? I got the Word in me and the Word's never down. Amen. Amen. Oh, they can feel the unbelief in that. I didn't say I don't have things come against me. You understand me. It comes against me like it does you. But I just don't take it in. And whatever tries to get in is meeting something that is more powerful than what is trying to get in. It's meeting the truth that I have meditated on. Woo, glory. I just now feel like I'm just now getting started. But this is, this is helping us. So meditation is the word getting in you and you getting into it. It forms your mentality. It forms your mindset. Um, you know, by the way, you, you, sometimes people haven't realized until they're, they're confronted, their thinking is confronted with the Word, they haven't realized that they are in a rut of thinking a certain way. Yeah. You know what a rut is? Yeah. You know, like, like a dirt path that yeah. people travel on over and over again forms ruts, you know. Yeah. Uh, that, that can happen in people's mindset. All right. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And yeah. until something happens that just brings upheaval to that way of mind that way of thinking that will that mind that rut in their mindset will hold them in that arena of bondage even though Jesus already made them free amen there's so many things that if we change our thinking we it changes our life praise God and so hallelujah are you getting anything out of this so um Notice Psalm 1, verse 2. I'm going to read this. This is a verse you know, Psalm 1, 2. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of them. God who stands in the way of the sinners and so forth, sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law shall he meditate day and night. Rotherham says, in his law doth he talk with himself day and night. In his law, in the word of God, in other words, does he talk with himself day and night. Um, meditation addresses the self-talk. All right, all right. I don't know if you know what I mean by self-talk. It's what you keep telling yourself. That's really good. Yeah. People say, you know, I said, I, said, I said to myself inside. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Meditation yep. addresses that. Yes, that's good. Yeah. 
meditation addresses the self-talk. The self-talk, well, I can't because. Huh? All the things you tell yourself. Maybe sometimes even unconsciously, maybe not unconsciously, but subconsciously. Everybody's conscious, right? If they're not if they're beside you and they're not conscious, slap them, they'll wake up. So it addresses the self-talk. I wish I had more time on some of these things. Um, so address your self-talk all day long. Then meditate in it day and night. This is not just what you think about when you go to bed. All day long you're telling yourself something. Amen. This meditation will help you address that. And rather than tell yourself lies, you tell yourself the truth. Mm. I wish I had a week to preach on this. So in his law, does he tell himself the right things all day long? Isn't that good? In the word of God, you talk to yourself and say the right things to yourself all day long. You know, you can keep thinking I'm tired. I'm always tired. Just, I just never get enough rest. Why don't you tell yourself, I'm strong, strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yeah, tell yourself the truth. Tell yourself the truth. And you can dip down in your spirit and draw your strength up from the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so do that, do that with the Word. Draw, talk to yourself. You know, grab the Word and talk to yourself with it. Sometimes you've got to look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, there's so much more. You want any more or you want to go home? I, I'll say this. It's the Word. Uh, remember, you know, we talked about you getting, the meditation is you getting in the Word and the Word getting in you. You know, we've read scriptures in, the, in services past. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Uh, there's a, there's, God is offering you His Word to get that into you. And when you do that, when you get that word into you, really, it's not until it gets in you that it starts talking to you. You can talk the word, but it has not yet talked to you. Oh, my, if I had time this morning. Just really kind of getting to what I wanted to get to. You can talk, you can say, in other words, you can say something that the Word says, but it has not yet spoken to you. It's a dead thing to you. It's not a living thing. It's not a reality to you. It's not revelation. It's not real. It's not, it hasn't stood up on the inside to you and announced itself. That's right. That's right. But you can, and then don't misunderstand me, it's not wrong to speak the word that you haven't got yet a revelation of it. That's a big key to getting the revelation of it. Yes. But just simply know that you can speak the word and not be in faith. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, I don't yeah. think so. Oh, uh, if I had time, I could prove yeah. it. Yeah. I could say this, and you, you challenged me in your thinking, but nowhere in the teachings of the New Testament, listen to what I said, the teachings of the New Testament, does the New Testament teach you to speak the word? Now, your mind, your mind will challenge that because of the way we say some things sometimes. But you'll never find that. You'll say, you'll find what it says. It always says, say what you believe, yeah, yeah. which should be in line with the Word. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm not saying that's wrong, right. but you can say it and not believe it. Yes, that's true. That's so good. True. Yes, sir. And sometimes that's why nothing's happening for people. Yeah. Is it wrong to say it when you don't believe it? No. Now, there's a whole other issue we should address between the heart and the head. You never will believe it with your head, but your heart can believe it, yeah. even when your head doesn't understand it. But anyway, you can, you can say it and not believe it. Is that wrong? No. That is a meditation saying. Yes. That's what he's talking about, Joshua 1 8. Yes. That's not wrong, it's scriptural. Come on. Yeah. But just don't wonder why nothing's happening yet. Because right. meditation, uh, speaking the word in meditation, is speaking unto faith. You can school your own spirit into faith. Yes. Yes. That's Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, don't unhook just because it's getting a little long here. You can school your spirit into faith. That's right. That's right. I said you can school your spirit into faith. Yes. You, can get, you can school the word into your spirit until it becomes engrafted into you. And you've got to do it on purpose. It won't, do it, by, it won't happen by osmosis. Just being in the right church. You've got to meditate. And as you school that into your spirit, 
One day, it won't be you talking the Word. It'll be the Word talking to you and you repeating what it's saying to you. <laughs> that's when things start changing. That's when things start happening because that's when faith came. Uh, you can hear it with these ears but not hear it in here. I've seen this work so many times. It's exactly what happened to the man when, Jesus, when, when Paul was preaching there in uh, Lystra. He heard him speak. He perceived he had faith to be healed. In other words, his face showed it. it, lit up. it his face lit up. He got it. Yeah. Paul said, act on that. Bam, got up and was healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Can you see what, what meditation will do for you? Yeah. Praise be to God. So it, it's the word that is in you that is really talking to you. Yeah. And so meditate on it until it speaks. <laughs> This word has a voice in it. <laughs> you can read it and not really hear it. You can, you can, but, but if you meditate on it, it'll, you ever heard somebody say it jumped off the page at me? It's like, wait, well, that, well, that is what it says. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and once it starts talking to you, now it's in you. Before that, it was the word out here talking to you. But, but, but it needs to get in here and talk to you. Hallelujah. And so meditate on it until it speaks. It'll speak to your need. It'll speak to your situation. When people come and they say, should I do this or should I do that? We know that the word hasn't spoken to them yet. It's not in them yet. Amen. Once it speaks to you, because it has a voice, it's alive. This word is alive. Praise the Lord. Once it speaks to you, now you're speaking in faith. That's, I, I, I trust your understanding what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why did Jesus say, whatever's in your heart, you will speak? Remember him saying that? Because whatever's in your heart is speaking to you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you can get the word into you that, that you dream the word. It's just the word and everything. Somebody said, I don't want to get too radical. Okay, stay mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going all the way. Yes. I'm, cutting, I'm cutting out more news than I've ever cut out before. Yeah. Yeah. That's their world, not my world. Yeah. My world's the world of the, wor the, world, of the word. <laughs> the world of the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Their curse doesn't belong to me. Yeah. Their problems because of their decisions doesn't belong to me. I got my, I got my world. I, my world's the world of the word. That's hard to say. Say that 17 times. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't mean I don't pray for them. I don't mean I you know, understand what I'm talking about. Stand up with me. I've gone long enough. A lot of people come to church and they give the word one hearing and then they go their way and forget what they heard. Ah, one hearing's not enough. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you're my disciples indeed. Real disciples are different than just saved people. You can be saved and not a disciple. A disciple is somebody who is being trained in the teachings of the one who is discipling. Amen. And it's a discipline. Amen. How many of you are going to, how many of you, don't, maybe don't raise your hand, but how many of you have realized what we were saying about social media? Yes. Yes. Nip that in the bud so you can, really all that time is time you could have been taking with the Word. I'm not saying it's wrong to scroll through social media. Sometimes there's things you need to know or whatever and so forth and so on, but you understand the principle. You can tell in your spirit whenever, you, your spirit will tell you, okay, shut it off now. Shut it off now. Amen. Not getting legalistic here, right? But I think that sometimes we need to make some of these adjustments. Amen. Hallelujah. All the prayer in the world won't take the place of what I preach to you this morning. Amen. Not preaching against prayer. We thank God for prayer. And so, but take what is preached. Take something really, you know, especially sermons that really, really speak to you. Yes. Listen to them again. Write things yes. down. And whenever, whenever you're writing, whenever you're listening, the Holy Ghost will say things that they didn't even say. Yes. Yes. Capture those things. Write them yes. down. Yes. And just ruminate. You know what I mean? <laughs> ruminate. <laughs> yeah, that just means you just ponder on that, stay with that, 
And the devil will say, well, you need, you got to read your whole book of the Bible today. Well, who said you got to read a whole book? If you get one truth, you get a hold of one truth, it'll do more for you than reading the whole book, a whole book of the Bible you don't, you don't, you didn't get anything out of. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this connection we can make with you through your word where you become so real to us. Father, the written word is not designed to be an end to itself. It's designed to lead us to the living word. You yourself, showing us yourself, showing us your very own nature, your very own goodness. We bless you and thank you for your written word. Thank you for the connection we make through it. Thank you, Father. It's full of your power. It changes us, transforms us and uh, brings us good success as we, as we steward it properly. We're grateful, Father, for the great honor of feeding on your word. In the name of Jesus. Father, for every doer of, the, of what was preached this morning, we thank you that you uh, will perform all that your word says you will do for those that meditate. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Hagen made this statement. I, I don't know if I can quote it exactly, but it's something to the effect. He said, uh, Meditation is the reverent attitude toward the Word of God that gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to reveal God's truth to us. Isn't that good? It's the reverent attitude. That's how you are reverent towards God's Word. You treat it with reverence by taking the time to meditate in it. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And when, that, when you do that and the truth gets unveiled to you, you'll come back to church and you'll go, Pastor, did you know what the Word said? Is that We've been trying to tell you that for a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why did you come like that? Because now it's talking to you. Woo! Glory be to God. That's where life, you, that's where you start really living life. That's where life gets real. I mean, that becomes, that, the truth of God's Word can become so real to you that you almost forgot what's happening in the natural. A different experience you're having in the natural. You're so absorbed in what God said. Brother Randy Greer was telling the story. I knew this story about his, uh, my brother uh, Hagen's daughter had a growth, uh, when she was young, had a growth appear. I think it was on her face or, or, or on her eye. And, uh, he had, Brother Hagen knew, believed in healing. He knew the healing scriptures. Uh, he had been healed himself. But yet he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to feed my spirit on the healing scriptures. Why didn't he just pray? Well, it wasn't an emergency situation, life or death right now, you know. But he just fed, fed those scriptures until he knew and he was convinced as soon as he prayed, that thing would go. And he fed his spirit like that. He spent time doing it after services he was preaching. And he got a hold of that, that truth all over again. How many of you know you, sometimes you can have it and then lose the revelation of it? Not, not that he lost, but you know what I mean. You just need to re, refresh that, renew that truth to, in your spirit over and over again. Faith needs to be renewed every day. Fed every day. So he did that and he, he was ready. He released his faith and he just started praising God. And he was home later and, and uh, just worshiping God. And, he said one day after some days of that doing that, he, he looked down and he said, he noticed the growth has gone from, her name was Pat, uh, her, her eye. And he asked Miss Aretha, I think I'm getting this about right, uh, that growth's gone, when did that leave? She said, oh, that's been gone for a couple of days. He got so absorbed in the truth he was believing and how real that was to him that she was healed, that he forgot to look on his nat at the natural circumstances. Woo! Glory be to God. Praise God. That's what meditation will do for you. Did you get anything out of this this morning? Well, you know what today did? It gave you some homework. No more coming to church and leaving and saying, that was good. Let's go back to the next service and see if it was going to be good. No, you got some homework. Glory to God. So take, a, you know, if you've never practiced this much, I know it sounds strange, but people have it. I, I, I know I pastor. <laughs> But if you never practice much, start, start with something you can grab onto. Start with just 10 minutes in the morning meditating on the truth. Then just keep upping it. 
you don't have to, you know. Somebody said, how long should I do this every day? I know I'm trying to quit, but you're, you're pulling so strong. I, I'll just blame you, you know. <laughs> but, but how long do I need to meditate? When does your spirit get satisfied? That might be different from one day to the next. It might be different from one person to the next. But when your spirit's satisfied, that's, just, that, that's the way you eat, isn't it? You keep eating until you're satisfied. Well, most of us. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah, God doesn't expect you to be sitting and reading your Bible all day long. It got quiet on me there. He does not expect you to sit and read your Bible all day long. But you can, you can meditate on it all day long. But you've got other things to do, right? Praise the Lord. 